Thanks to Elegoo, I recently got my hands on my first FDM 3D printer, and they wanted to show just how easy it was for a beginner to get set up and started with FDM printing using the new Neptune 3 Pro. The one thing they didn't count on though? Me. So hi, I'm Ross, and welcome to Fohammer Videos. Now, when I posted online saying that I've got a Neptune 3 to review and I've never touched an FDM printer before, I had a lot of negative comments saying, well, that's not going to be a useful review, is it? Well, I suppose it depends really on the context. If you're an experienced FDM printer, then no, this isn't the video for you. There are plenty of videos out there telling you just how great the Neptune 3 and the Neptune 3 Pro and the rest of the series are. And yeah, I'll echo that. They're absolutely fantastic in my experience. But the point of this video is to relate to those people who are brand new to FDM printing and have never touched one before. Because it's very different to resin that I'm used to, but most of the videos online are really great telling you how to dial in your settings, but what if you're having the same problems I had when I first got this out of the box? And that problem specifically was getting things to print in the first place. Now I do need to apologise to Elegoo here because they sent me this printer expecting me to do a video in a couple of three weeks, but there's a couple of things that have got in the way. One, well, COVID again. Two, I've also been renovating my room. And three, well, I just had to learn how these things actually worked before I could get prints off. And then when it comes to printing, until you've dialed it in, which I haven't done yet, it does take a long while to print things. And I wanted to print some cool big stuff in order to show off just how well this printer could print for the sake of this video. So the first thing with FDM printers is quite common that you have to actually build them yourselves. This isn't something I was aware of or even prepared for, but it turns out it's actually quite straightforward. Anybody who's owned a Meccano set as a kid or has any basic building or connecting experience should easily be able to follow the instruction manual and the included video guides in order to get this up and running really, really quickly. In fact, including filming time, this only took me about an hour to get everything connected and plugged in. So whilst I show you some of the basics of the building procedure, let me just tell you some of the standout features of the Neptune 3. Whether these are exclusive to the Neptune series or a great thing for this printer, like I said, I don't know, but I found this really handy. So the first thing is you get this reel that sits above the print area that lets you house your filament as it's printing and then this feeds down through a module which is able to tell when the filaments run out and what's really good is throughout the printing if you run out of filament it will pause the job let you replace the filament and then continue the print job exactly where it left off and this is exactly what happened to me at one point halfway through Another feature that people seem to be really excited about from what I've read online is that this is a direct drive printer. So what that means is your filament will directly be extruded and grabbed above the hot end of the print area. So unlike the other type, which is called a Bowden tube, where the filament is fed through the tube, this allows a lot more print accuracy when you're lifting from parts of a model to the next because it can actually retract the plastic a lot more efficiently and a lot more directly because there's no play and flex and give between the actual driving end and the hot end of your printer. The standout feature of the Neptune 3 is its auto bed leveling, which features 36 points where it detects the height of the bed before it actually begins to print anything. And I only had to do this once through the entire process because I never changed anything such as the hot end or the height or tightness of the bed throughout. And throughout me trying to get this printer to work and print big things, I just took it for granted and blindly assumed that bed levelling was absolutely nothing to do with any of the struggles I was having. And by the time I got it to print, it turns out, I was right. So when it came to printing my first model, this was really straightforward. Elegoo actually supplied a tiny reel of PLA filament along with a pre-sliced model which was included on the micro SD card. So just plug in the PLA filament as you directed to in the instruction manual, pop in the micro SD card and choose the file to print. And after only an hour or so, I had my first FDM print and 
I was really impressed with the quality. And I just assumed that these printers were so plug and play that I waded straight in to print a huge model with a reel of filament my mate had lent me. And the results? Well, see for yourself. So I went back to the internet to try and figure out what I was potentially doing wrong. And the first thing I learned, well, there's different types of filament. And this may be obvious to you, but again, I didn't get any filament from Elegoo, I was just borrowing some from a mate. So it turns out we've got things like PLA, ABS, and PTFE. And it's the latter of which that I was trying to use, and I only picked it because, well, it was black. As it turns out, PTFE is actually quite notoriously tricky to use, even for experienced printers, so me as a beginner should certainly steer clear of it. So I went back through my bundle of spares that my mate had given me, and it turns out quite a few of the reels actually were PLA. But when trying to print with this, once again I was left with nothing but balls and balls of string. So this is when I start going through testing and deciding to do layers at different temperatures and printing various tests that you can find online. And it was during these tests that, well, just like every resin printer I've had where the USB drive fails, the micro SD card failed. And the only SD card I had spare was a 64 gig card something which is notoriously difficult to format in FAT32, which is exactly what you need the format to be in to work with this printer. So this is where things got a little bit tricky and I had to use several applications and something that used the command line in order to get this 64 gig card in the correct format. So after several hours of watching more videos, I was finally able to get something printed using one of the spools of PLA that my mate lent me. And this was a tool holder for the Neptune 3 for all the tools and Allen keys and such. And this actually comes on your micro SD card. But nevertheless, I sliced this myself and managed to get it to print. But when I woke up the next morning after trying to once again print the big thing I wanted to print, I was once again greeted with a massive reel of string. <sighs> the problem was me. I'm trying to be cheap. And I don't think this is an unrealistic scenario. If you've just spent two, three hundred dollar pounds on a 3D printer, if your mate's got some PLA handy, you're going to take it. I mean, at the end of the day, this is just to cut your teeth on, right? But it turns out PLA can actually absorb moisture. And forgive me for thinking otherwise, but everything I've known or purchased in my life that has repelled water has normally been made out of plastic. And whilst you can apparently sort this out by banging your PLA in the oven for a bit, as a beginner and as somebody who's recently upset the wife by installing miniature things in our kitchen, I didn't want to upset her further by cooking plastic in the same place we feed our kids. So when I decided to commit and buy myself some eSun filament, it worked straight away, no problems, and I got this off the print bed without any issues. This was a triumph. And I'm going to make a note here, huge success. And to follow on from this, I finally managed to get my big piece of miniature scenery printed without any problems at all. I literally just put it in the slicer, chose the profile for this filament, and clicked print. I came down the next morning to find that not only did I not have string, but it was still printing. And then three days later, I had a completed model. The next thing I wanted to do was test the detail of this printer. And there was actually a profile set up for this filament to print at 0.06mm, which is incredible when you consider that up until this last year, 0.05mm has been fairly standard on resin printers. And when I got this Wolverine bust off the build plate, I was blown away by just how much detail was in it. Not only does it have really tight layer lines, but there is actually surface texture in there that's comparable to resin 3D prints. Now, when it comes to supports, I haven't learned this yet, so I was probably a bit over heavy, but yeah, aside the few scratches on there, the detail of this is absolutely incredible. 
Now, this isn't going to make me want to get rid of or replace any of my resin 3D printers anytime soon, but it's certainly one of those things that's an extension to the 3D printing hobby. I like to print miniatures. I've always been a miniature painter and that's what my focus is. But when it comes to larger things like terrain, resin printers just aren't there on the scale or at least the price of those printers at larger scale is too prohibitive. So for something like this, I think the layer lines you do get are a trade-off especially when throughout my 3D printing hobby experience, the more I 3D print, the larger the things I want to print become. And now I'm able to print super cool things and I can do it with, yeah, the slight trade-off of a few layer lines that I'll have to sand down. But I'm happy with that, I'll take it. So let's just summarize. Yes, FDM printing can be plug and play so long as you don't try and cheap it out like me. So get one of these Neptune 3s, it'll level itself once you've built it, and then so long as you've got some filament and then the profile in the slicer in order for it to work again, I recommend the one I use because it just worked, and then just put things through the slicer and press print at whatever layer height you want. It just works. There's a couple of things you can do to add to this that I've since learned. So some glue stick on the bed will really help those first layers adhere. And also you can get something that runs on an Android phone or a Raspberry Pi called Octoprint that allows you to control the printer remotely and it lets you monitor the prints throughout because you are going to need, especially with your early prints, to be quite close to monitoring it so that if you've got any issues, you can take action there in the moment. It's not as simple as resin printing where it's just a case of okay exposure time and lift height there are so many settings that throughout your experience you're going to need to learn and move up and down and various things regardless so make sure you get something standard where you've already got a profile and at least then you're going to get printing straight away and you can tweak to your own taste and your own flavor and your own learnings as you go through your experience so now that it's all said and done, would I recommend this printer? Well, I'm sorry Elagu, but no. I'm not going to tell anyone to buy this printer. But the reason being is because in the time it's taken me to put this video together and learn how the printer works so that I can showcase the cool stuff shown here, you've actually already announced the Neptune 3 Plus and the Neptune 3 Max. And regardless if I can get my hands on one of those for review, I'm going to be buying the Neptune 3 Max because this printer does everything that I need it to without any issues at all, but I want to print bigger things now. But yeah, in all seriousness, look, of course I'd recommend this printer, especially to beginners because it's got auto bed leveling, it detects when you've run out of filament so that you can top up halfway through, and so long as you get the right filament, it does just work. You literally just pop a model into your slicer, support it as you need to, and most of that's automatic, and then just pop it in the printer and it prints. But because there are bigger printers available, unless you've got a budget or space constraint, why would you not get the bigger printer if it does exactly the same thing as this one? With that done, I just want to thank everyone for watching. If you found this useful at all and it gave you a clue and helped you get into FDM printing, then brilliant. Help me out with a comment down below, a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell your friends, share this online, whatever. All of that really helps me grow and build the channel. We've just hit 9,000 subscribers and I'm absolutely over the moon with that. And hopefully we'll be able to hit 10K in the next few months. So that's what we're aiming for thank you. Massive thanks goes out to our patrons and they're up on the screen right now and you can join us on Patreon by following the link down in the description and help us make more and better content in the future. That's all from me and that's all for now. See you guys next time. Fohammer out.